individuals. Huntington Study Group's Phase three coenzyme Q10 study is enrolling over 600. Anecdotally, recruitment for these trials has not been as rapid as we would hope. Looking at the ACR16 trial being run by NeuroSearch is interesting. NeuroSearch is currently recruiting approximately 220 people across North America to test their drug. To stay on schedule, the last person signing up for the trial had to have had their first visit by November 24th this year. This schedule would have required 26 patients a month to sign up for the trial. In reality, over the last six months, they've recruited an average of 16 patients per month. This shortfall means the results of this trial will be delayed, if trends continue, by about three months. If ACR16 turned out to be the wonder drug that profoundly changed the course of HD, we all would have just lost three months' worth of neurons waiting for recruitment. I have no idea if ACR16 is a wonder drug or not, but I would rather know and move on. I encourage the lay and funding organizations to work together towards a, bet, towards a unified communications pipeline about clinical trial progress. We as family members need to meet these organizations halfway by being reachable and in touch. Everyone in this room who is eligible for clinical trials or knows somebody who is should register at hdtrials.org. My hope is that some of the initiatives discussed at this meeting will lead to a better flow of information on clinical trials from sponsors and initiators to patients. Finally, I'd like to say a few words about genetic testing. What may not be obvious to everyone is that all the trials I've mentioned can en only enroll mutation positive or symptomatic people. Ethically, giving experimental compounds to unaffected individuals is impossible, severely limiting the pool of potential participants in trials. I know this is a contentious issue. I don't have the answers for anyone but myself. But historically, many people have preferred not to know their status because in the absence of treatment, there seemed to be no benefit to knowing. But having my test result has immensely improved my life in concrete ways despite carrying the mutant gene. I was able to make reproductive decisions that ended HD in my family. I was able to pick a career that was meaningful in the context of a foreshortened lifespan. I am able to further to contribute to the therapy by participating in trials that are only open to tested individuals. The uptake rate for genetic testing HD varies worldwide between 5 and 20 percent, probably something like 10 percent in North America. Reasonable approximations argue that there are about 50,000 people in North America between the ages of 18 and 45 carrying the HD mutation. These are the people who could eventually participate and benefit from clinical trials. If we accept these approximations and assume a, a testing uptake rate of about 10 percent, we would guess there are about 5,000 people who could currently participate in clinical trials in North America. But not all these people can participate in every trial. As many of you will know, each trial comes with a long list of things like age, CAG size, other medications, and other things that eliminate a number of people from the testing pool. Furthermore, geographical sites are not equally distributed around the world, meaning that not everyone can participate in every test. Currently, these trials are being run on only on symptomatic people. My sincere hope is that we are moving towards an era when we start running preventative trials based on biomarkers discovered and track and predict. This is not opinion or advocacy, but a simple fact. To cure HD, we need to run clinical trials. In order to run clinical trials, we need as deep and as broad a subject population as possible. Only as a community can we run the trials that are needed to cure HD for ourselves, our children, and our grandchildren. For the people who've decided that testing is the right thing to do for themselves, participation in trials is a concrete benefit for themselves and for all of us as a community. I have often thought that the unique evil of HD is its utter lack of hope. So many other human diseases, uh, no matter how devastating, offer some small portion of hope. The finality of genetic judgment in HD is, to me, its cruelest feature. But my interaction with scientific research over the last six years is changing these feelings of hopelessness. My blind fear of my grandmother's shape in her bed has been transformed into the more mundane fear of something that is dangerous but understood. My refusal to consider having children has been transformed by science into two beautiful little people who have every reason to expect a long life. And my feeling that there is no hope has evolved into a belief, into a belief that the people living with HD today have every reason to hope for a treatment and to fight for that hope. Thank you.